My name is Father Joseph Martusello. I'm the parochial vicar here at Holy Cross Parish. And on behalf of Father Coffus, our pastor, myself, Mary Jo, and all the parish staff, we extend our deepest sympathies and sincere condolences to you and your family as you come here today to mourn the loss of our dear sister and friend, Gracie. In the waters of baptism, Grace died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. The entrance hymn is on the back of your program, How Great Thou Art. Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Grace, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, mourned and heard this word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting or in disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. 
Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. How lovely your dwelling, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out for the living God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest to settle her young. My home is by your altars, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed the man who finds refuge in you, in their hearts are a pilgrim roads. As they pass through the back of alley, they find spring water to drink. The early rain covers it with blessings. They will go from strength to strength to see the God of gods on Zion. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Hear my prayer, O Lord Almighty. Listen, God of Jacob. O God, watch over our shield. Look upon the face of your anointed. Better one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Better the threshold of the house of my God than a home in the tents of the wicked. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. For a sun and shield is the Lord God, bestowing all grace and glory. The Lord withholds no good things from those who walk without reproach. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence, everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Open our hearts, Lord, to hear your words. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. 
and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. More torturous than all else is the human heart, the prophet Jeremiah says. And you may agree with that scripture passage today as you come to this church with heavy hearts. In the gospel, one of the few times Jesus really showed his humanity was when his beloved friend Lazarus died. The gospel tells us that Jesus wept, that he cried for the loss of his friend. He was moved to tears. And so Jesus understands your grief and your loss that you feel today. Jesus weeps with you as you weep here today for grace. Today you weep and grieve, and grieve you must. But we must never despair. We have hope and the promise of eternal life. We gather here today because our faith tells us that life does not end in death. It lives on eternally. Grace was baptized into the life of Christ. And St. Paul reminds us that if Grace had lived in Christ and died in Christ, she will also rise with him to eternal life. This is our hope. It is the hope of the resurrection that we hear in the gospel. It is the hope of one day seeing the Lord face to face. It is the hope of living forever in eternal happiness and peace. It is the hope of one day seeing grace again, there with all the angels and saints in heavenly glory. And so the reason why we are gathered here today is because we come to pray and commend grace to the infinite mercy of Almighty God. We commend grace to the merciful God and Savior who suffered and died for her in Jesus Christ. We are here today because our faith tells us that God loves us so much, so much, that he will do anything to bring us home. We are reminded of this every time we look at a crucifix. Christ came to suffer and die the most torturous death on a cross to save us from our sins. And he did this for all of humanity, for you, for me, and yes, for Gracie. Grace was baptized into the life of Christ. Her soul was washed in the waters of regeneration. She was anointed as an heir of Christ the King. She was clothed with the robe of salvation. And she was given the light of divine life and grace, like her name. Grace was grace to be a beloved child of God. And we are consoled by the words of our merciful Savior, who said, This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but that I shall raise it up on the last day. And my sheep hear my voice, And I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. 
And so, my friends, funerals often reawaken us to the reality of our own mortality. Losing a loved one reawakens us to the most certain thing in life, that we will all someday die. And the gospel reminds us that it will happen on an unknown day, at an unknown hour, and in an unknown manner. Life is so precious, yet so short. And one of the Psalms reminds us that man is like a mere breath. His days are like a passing shadow. So our time will come soon, and our hour will be here before we know it. So what is the meaning of this short life, you might ask? The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that we were made to know God, to love God, and to serve God here in this world so that we can be happy with him forever in the next. We are only pilgrims on this earth, passing through this valley of tears, and it is the valley of tears. But we are passing through to arrive at our eternal homeland in heaven, where there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering. We were not made for this world. We were made for God and God alone. And our hearts are restless until they rest in him. This world is filled with the pain of so many separations and goodbyes. And it hurts to say farewell to someone we love so much, doesn't it? But in heaven, there will be no more goodbyes, no more tears, just joyful salutations. So as we say farewell today, to our beloved sister and friend Grace. Let us also consider how we want to live the rest of our lives. Let us consider whether we want to live for the empty promises of the world or for Jesus Christ and the promise of eternal life. My friends, we will have no regrets if we choose to follow Christ And I assure you that the pain, the struggle, and the sacrifices in this life and the cross of the Christian life will be as nothing compared with what is to come. For St. Paul reminds us that no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things the Lord has prepared for those who love him. Eternal rest grant unto grace, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Gracie, may the angels be your guide. May they lead you into paradise and take you home to the new Jerusalem. Let us pray. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. 
For Gracie, who was given the promise of eternal life and baptism, may the Lord give her communion with the saints forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who loved and were loved by Gracie, that you may find comfort in your belief in the Lord's promise of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For each of you with whom Gracie so generously shared her many gifts, may you too grow in the ability to share your gifts and lighten the burdens of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died in the hope of rising again, especially Gracie, her husband Harold, her sons Gordon and Lynn, and her great-granddaughter Chelsea, her brothers Frank, Jimmy, Freddie, and George, and sister-in-law Patricia, as well as all her family members who've gone before her. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For Gracie's family, especially her 12 grandchildren, 21 great-grandchildren, and 15 great-great-grandchildren, and her sister-in-law, Marion, as well as her extended family and dear friends, that they feel the healing power of Christ in the midst of their sadness and grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us present here today, that God will bless us richly with the gifts he knows we need to fully celebrate life and recognize the new beginning which he offers us each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. And let us pause and make our own private petitions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We unite these and all our poor prayers to those of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary, and speak them in the name of her Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Grace, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Grace, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was nourished and united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Just a couple instructions on receiving Holy Communion. I'll just do one section at a time. And um, please, if, if you are not Catholic, to refrain from receiving Holy Communion out of respect for the Blessed Sacrament. Um, but you can come up and receive a blessing with your hands crossed like this. And, um, and we'll proceed. And I'd be very thankful for that. So thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Grace may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to invite Gracie's niece, Michelle, forward to share a few prayer uh, words about her aunt. read now. (laughs) Well, Aunt Gracie, you are a wonderful and blessed person that I ever known in my entire life. She, um, she attended my wedding and read from the Bible, and so did my Aunt Connie as well. And I'm going to read a little poem of David, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lay down in the green pastures. He left me besides the hills of the waters. He restored me my soul and left me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet that I walk through the valley of the shallow of death, I will feel no evil and thought out of me. They rode and they staff, they comfort me. Let preparedness a table before me in the presence of my enemies that anoint miss my head with oil and the cup runth over me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me 
and all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We used to come to Holy Cross all the time with my dad and Aunt Gracie from many mass with Father Tom and also Father Peter here. And um, Aunt Gracie just loved her church and everybody around her and was a great person. She enjoyed Chinese food and she loved her beer. <laughs> Always wanted a beer and I know she's up in heaven now with all the Mitchells and Devellers having a, a nice beer. But I really miss you, Aunt Gracie, and you will always be in my heart forever. Thank you. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Grace. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of grace, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. Our recessional hymn is on the back of your program, Amazing Grace.
Eucharist on Monday, there is a visiting priest to do 520 Mass. Because Father Hoffus and Father Darling are going to be with Father Joseph and Cormie. Um, there's a yellow post-it hanging in the sacristy on the big schedule with the priest's name. He's retired, Father Phil Brockmeyer. He's actually from Syracuse. Yeah, I agree. 